Mordants are often underestimated. For the beginner, they may even seem boring because no color change happens when we mordant cloth or yarns. But an understanding of mordants unlocks not only the full potential of natural dyes, but also a wide range of surface design techniques. Mordants truly are the secret heart of color. Most of us generally assume that color comes from something, a paint pot, a pen, or a crayon, and is put on something, a wall, a piece of paper, or a cloth. So when people first begin to work with natural dyes, they tend to think that the color is fully formed in the plant, and all they need is a way to get it on the cloth. But natural dyes do not work that way, and traditional artisans who worked with natural dyes in the past would not have thought that way. For them, working with natural color was all about transformation. The transformation is a complex drama that involves three principal players, a fiber, a dye, and a mordant. The dye always comes from something organic, something that is alive, either a plant or an animal. The mordant always comes from something inorganic, that is, something not living, metallic salts like those of aluminum, iron, and copper. The drama of natural dyes is that elements of the organic world interact with elements of the inorganic world to make permanent color. A mordant is not something you add to get a bit of color to stick to the cloth. It is not an adhesive or a glue. So what is a mordant? If we look up the term, a dictionary will tell us that mordant derives from the French word mord, to bite. This is descriptive, but not very useful. A good definition for the dyer is that a mordant is a metallic salt that can be used to combine with a natural dye to make a pigment. I mentioned that mordants and natural dyes are all about transformation, and this is true. Mordants start out as soluble metal salts which dissolve in water. Natural dyes start out as soluble colorants which dissolve in water. And the two together transform into an insoluble pigment which will not dissolve in water. With luck, this transformation takes place on the thing we are dyeing. This makes sense when you think about it. If the color were soluble, it would wash off in water but a dyer wants it to become insoluble so that it stays permanently on the cloth and does not dissolve when the cloth is washed. All living matter is perishable. That is, it breaks down when it dies. It rots or ferments or decomposes. But the dyer's art preserves only that portion of the living matter that holds color. If done right, it will preserve that color forever. A natural dyer is controlling a transformation between a mordant and a dye. This transformation changes both the mordant and the dye. The secret to successful dyeing is to get this transformation to happen on the fiber. This is particularly challenging for cellulose fibers. So for cellulose fibers we use a tannin. Generally, we complete a tannin bath first before the mordant bath. A tannin is not a mordant, but it is used in the mordanting process and it is essential to the fastness of dyes on cellulose fibers. So dyers will often include the tannin when giving the mordant recipe. Controlling where the mordant or the tannin is applied can give us an incredible opportunity to create pattern on cloth. This is the basis for many block printing and hand painting traditions. In fact, in many of these traditions, a resist is not used to control the dye, but rather to control the mordant. The tannin we use can itself add a color, like myrobalan, or it can be clear, like gallnut. And a mordant can also be clear, like alum, or it can shift the dye, like iron or copper. Moreover, there are a few types of alum. Each one has its own strengths and weaknesses. And not all natural dyes are mordant dyes. Indigo, for example, does not require a mordant. This is because the conditions that make indigo soluble in the dye bath and a pigment on the cloth are quite different. 
To conclude, I encourage you to think of mortating not as a bewildering complex process, but rather as an almost infinite field of possibility. Much of the most ingenious natural dye use over the centuries has had at its heart a thorough knowledge of how dyes, tannins, mordants and fibres all interact. And a knowledge of how mordants interact with natural dyes opens up completely new worlds of pigments, inks and paints. Mordants truly are the secret heart of colour.